and those are equivalent. Another type of regularization we could do is noise injection. So noise injection, there are two ways we can do this. We can do it on the input, and we can do it on the output. On the output, I'm going to wait and talk about that at a later point, because it really makes more sense when we've got a classification problem. Um, it'll just make more sense. So for the input, here's the idea. We can inject random noise into x, right, for every x in our training set. We, we don't want to do this while we are uh, calculating our validation loss, and we don't want to do it when we're actually at inference time out in the field, but we do want to do it during training. So let me pictorial kind of show you what I mean. So let's say we have a face, right? And I don't care what the label is. Rather, so this is x. We're going to go ahead and add in some noise. So this noise, I'm going to represent conceptually as some epsilon. So this is noise. And then this equals some slightly modified version of the picture. What do I mean by noise? What's the noise going to be? Well, it's going to be, let's say, for every pixel, uh, a small plus or minus. Right? So if we've got a particular pixel value here, let's say that has a red value of 254, here this would be a positive 1, and that would turn it into a red value of 255. So conceptually, what I'm going to represent this as is a kind of noisy, happy face. This is not really what is happening. Right? The adding noise doesn't make the lines go jagged, but that's the conceptual idea of this is that we are a little bit reducing the fidelity of x. And so this is our x prime. And our x prime is what we feed in here for our training. Every batch that we run through, we're going to be generating slightly different noise, you know, a different random set of noise. So again, these can just be, uh, let's say, plus or minus 1, right? These x values are between 0 and 255, and so these can be plus or minus 1, let's say. Um, in other circumstances, we might have different kind of noise. So let's say we have a audio stream, right? We're trying to support uh, Hey Alexa, or sorry, I'm a Google guy. I don't use Alexa, so it's Hey Google, right? Uh, and so we have a audio stream that says, right? We have our waveform. It says, let's say, hey, Google. And we have another waveform uh, that says, uh, that's not a hey, Google, right? We're trying to tell when the user says, hey, Google, and when they don't say, hey, Google. And so we have other waveforms. Uh, that's, this is maybe, um, you know, TV uh, dialogue. Okay. And then what we would do is, again, add in some noise, just maybe some white noise, right, to get this. Or maybe we're going to add in not just noise, maybe we're going to add in something that is, well, we could add in, let's say, a dog barking, right, because we might have a dog barking over TV dialogue in real life, and we might have a dog barking over, hey, Google, in real life. I'd consider that more like data augmentation, though, right, where we're actually taking some data that's there, like a nice, hey, Google, um, um, waveform and adding in some not just no not random noise right so noise injection would say we end in random noise data augmentation would say we add in a dog barking or a doorbell ringing or uh, you know the uh, uh, lawnmower running things like that so this is the random noise injection and so what it helps do is ensure that the model is robust, that our choice of theta here is robust to perturbations. Let me show you a chart. So what these perturbations are going to do is make some adjustments to theta. So they're going to be moving theta around. Let's look 
at a chart of theta versus our loss. And this is a, in two dimensions, but theta is multidimensional. So really this is in a big multidimensional space, but we're just looking at it kind of here. So let's say this looks like something like that. So a question comes up. Would we prefer our learning to find theta here or to find theta here? I'm going to claim we would like a broad, flat area for theta rather than being at the bottom of a canyon. And the reason is this is, in this location, we're not very robust. Small changes to theta can cause large changes to our loss. Whereas here, we are more robust. So this seems to, this would tend to generalize better. And part of what this adding noise is going to do is take us out of this canyon because we're going to be taking small changes, you know, small changes in x means we're going to end up with some small changes in theta. And our, our hope is, in this case, our error kind of will be big enough that we'll jump past this and then go into this larger area and then we can make small changes and it doesn't really affect the loss. So that's the idea of this noise injection.